This is KGW News at Sunrise. It is back to school time in Portland. The state's biggest district is opening its doors for the youngest kids. We're live at an elementary school this morning to break down what to expect as hybrid learning begins. Also this morning, we'll have the latest on the city council's attempt to tackle Portland's homeless crisis. The council, we can tell you right now, is scrapping a plan that would have allowed organized homeless camps to set up in city parks. And I think when the show airs, people will really feel strongly about how much it means to be part of the, the Portland culinary scene. Yep, Top Chef is back and it's right here in Portland. We've got all the details on the brand new season set in Oregon and the two local chefs in the mix that premieres tonight. Yeah, that story is coming up at 515, but uh, let's bring Rod into the mix. It is the first day of April. Yes. Uh, Rod, the first three mornings this week on Sunrise, we made a pretty big deal about whether or not it would hit 70 <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Did it hit 70 yet? 513 yesterday afternoon, PDX popped to 71 yes. for a high temperature. Ooh. Now, a reminder that today's April Fool's Day. It's the only day of the entire year that you really can't trust the forecast. Well, if only that were true. Here's a look at uh, Wells Fargo camera. We're partly cloudy out there. It's, it's warm. 48 out along the Columbia River. Some of you out in Washington County have just dipped into the 30s, but overall it's pretty comfortable to start your day. Partly cloudy moving forward, a cooler west breeze, 54 at noon, and still very nice out there, 65 degrees for a high temperature. Sounds good. All right, Rod, thank you. Well, today is a big day for some of the youngest kids in Portland, pre-K through first graders. They are getting up and ready for their first day of in-person hybrid learning. KGW's Brian Clark Lee joining us live at Scott Elementary School this morning. It's at Northeast 67th and Prescott. So, Brian, how will this work to keep everyone safe from the virus? What are the, some of the new protocols? Well, good morning, Nina, and there's been a lot of upgrades to the schools, and we'll get to that in a minute. But with hybrid learning, the students will be in the classroom four days a week, and then they'll work from home on Wednesdays. Today, pre-K through first graders start. Monday will be second through fifth, and the week of April 19th, middle and high schoolers come back. And we were able to see a lot of the precautions ourselves when we toured Jason Lee Elementary a few weeks ago. Once inside the building, staff members will do a visual check of students and ask if they feel okay. There are signs reminding kids to social distance and arrows directing which way to walk. Every bathroom has been pre-assigned to, to a classroom to keep kids from bunching up. Another concern parents had was ventilation inside the classrooms. Throughout the district, we've got about 8,000 different filters. And so we are going through and all the ones that were able to upgrade to a higher filter type are doing that. However, not all of our filters or our systems are able to handle that. So that's why we've, uh, we'll be putting the portable HEPA filters in every single classroom and all those will be in before hybrid begins. Parents are also being asked to check their kids' health before they come into school. And coming up at 6, we'll have a live interview with Superintendent Guadalupe Guerrero. And he's going to talk about how the district got ready and how many families are deciding to send their students back. Back to you guys. It'll be interesting to hear. Bryant, thank you. Also this morning, breaking news on the vaccine front. Pfizer confirming trials going on right now show its vaccine protects you for at least six months after your second dose. Pfizer had about 12,000 people participate and there were no serious safety concerns. The trials also show the vaccine is effective against the COVID variant that first emerged in South Africa. Some scientists worried that wouldn't be the case. Drew, that's some great news, and so is this, because every adult in Washington will now be eligible for the COVID vaccine in just two weeks. That's right, Brenda. Governor Jay Inslee delivered that news yesterday, moving up the state's timeline and again, making everyone in Washington 16 and over eligible starting April 15th. Uh, we are confident we can take this step because of our dosage allocations have increased. Uh, we've hit now had roughly 3.3 million doses that have been administered in our state. And uh, uh, more than 1 million Washingtonians are already fully vaccinated. So that's great news. We talked to some people along Vancouver's downtown waterfront about this news yesterday. Most of the people we talked to, absolutely excited. Although some people also told us they're still not planning to get the shot. I'm excited for it. The more, the merrier. I, I don't see a downside to that. I, I think either. that's a, I think it's just fine thing. 
So maybe the lines are longer, but um, but you still get but it. At least it's there for those that want it. Yeah. So it was just yesterday that Washington expanded its window of vaccine eligibility to include two million more people across the state. But again, now big news, everyone in Washington, 16 and older, will become eligible two weeks from today. Well, Oregon announced effective immediately. 20 counties are moving ahead with the next eligible group. Take a look at the map. The counties in blue there are opening eligibility to group seven right now. The rest of Oregon moves to that group on Monday. That includes frontline workers and people 16 and older with underlying health conditions. All right, let's get to three more things to know about COVID this morning. Number one, we have an update on Oregon's vaccine count. Now, these are the latest numbers as of yesterday afternoon. So more than 1.15 million Oregonians have gotten at least their first dose, and the majority of those have also gotten their second. So that puts us at 27% of the population. In Washington, it's nearly 28% of the state. That's more than 2.1 million people with at least their first dose. Number two, as as cases surge in Europe, France is going back into a third nationwide lockdown. Schools will be closing down. There's a new travel ban and a nightly curfew. This is going to last for a month and comes as the country is trying to contain a new wave. And number three, early data reveals COVID was the third leading cause of death in the U.S. last year. The CDC says 375,000 Americans died of it in 2020. Only heart disease and cancer were deadlier. The overall death rate, that includes everything, increased nearly 16 percent from 2019. The largest rise among elderly, black people and Native Americans. COVID deaths were highest among the Hispanic population. And those are your three things to know. Let's get back to our local stories right now. Portland City Council voted to extend the city's housing emergency plan, which has been in place now since 2015. There was a pretty divisive proposal that's been on the table in recent weeks, but City Council did decide that Portland parks will not be used for organized homeless camps. Catherine Cook has more on that for us. Outside of an emergency declaration, outdoor shelters would not be allowed in parks. That was one of the proposed amendments Portland City Council heard Wednesday. It's part of a series of amendments to proposed code changes meant to address Portland's homeless crisis. It's called the Sheltered Housing Continuum proposal. Over the last several weeks, Council has heard a lot of public testimony on the effort. The majority centered on a proposal that would allow nonprofits and agencies to set up temporary organized camps similar to the Kenton Women's Shelter, in open space zones. That includes Portland Parks. We need to set some sort of standards. This is completely out of control. I beg you, please clean up the camps. Put yourself in the shoes of a houseless neighbor. What would it mean to you to have a safe place to sleep, secure your belongings, a place with access to hygiene and cooking facilities, and a place where you can make and find community and support? Council considered all testimony before voting unanimously to take parks and open spaces off the table. This was not the preferred option nor um, intention, and rather um, our focus should be on permanency solutions. Um, and we need to look at available city owned land for these potentially permanent sites. I, I hope that this amendment provides a reassurance to concerned community members. I vote aye. I agree with my colleagues that natural and environmentally sensitive areas are not appropriate for this purpose. Council did not get through all the proposed amendments today. They'll pick it up again April 14th. That's when they'll consider allowing shelters on institutional sites like churches. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Look at all these people gathering. It's because this place was loved, the school was loved, the museum was loved. And children have already had a tough year. This is only compounding it. Parents and students rallied outside the Portland Children's Museum and Opal School. Last week, the museum board announced both those places will close for good. That has families who went to the charter school scrambling for other placements. One mom says she'll really miss how the museum went above and beyond for kids with special needs. Uh, my son and I have been coming to the museum for years. Um, it is pretty much, we feel, one of the only organizations in the Portland metro area that's completely inclusive and welcomes children of all abilities. 
Parents say the closure came out of the blue and they feel the board didn't do enough to try and save the museum and school. Now, in a previous statement, we've talked about this. The board said COVID shutdowns were devastating for attendance and revenue, and they just could not afford to reopen. Yeah, my kids are in their 20s now, and they went there when they were little ones, so it will be missed. The Children's Museum, if folks aren't familiar, Rod, is up near Washington Park. I know that place is packed out when your forecast is this nice. Well, you know, I, I want to say there's still hope, right, Brenda? People are coming together to see if they can find a They're solution. They're trying. Yeah. All right, what a what a day yesterday was. A lot of you uh, uh, went to my KGW Rod Hill Facebook page and posted your beautiful pics. This one, the setting sun on what was a 60 plus degree day at the coast and a 71 degree day in Portland. Uh, Maria posting this picture. Boy, she caught the sunset there perfectly. Uh, here's a look at where we are this morning. You know, it's been freezing, right? The last few starts. Look at where we are right now. 40 in Kelso, 43 in Newport and Salem, 48 out along the river at uh, PDX and the Dow's holding just above freezing. There's a weakening front that uh, pushes through the area today. We don't think it brings any precipitation uh, overall. It will bring partly cloudy skies and just a little bit of a cool down. Here we are at 9 a.m. You can see a frontal band offshore, then a mix of some cloudiness inland at 4 p.m. this afternoon. But generally, we think today is partly cloudy. And still pretty warm. This shows 67 in Salem and McMinnville. For, for some of you, that's about as warm as you ended up being yesterday, by the way. And then up through southwest Washington, Longview only 62. There could be thicker cloud cover up north. And at least later today, the chance of some sprinkles. That's just a, a chance. I don't want you to be surprised if, if something like that happens. Uh, here's our seven day forecast. This is a different look graphic than I normally show you. The one I typically show you are having some issues with. But it does show if you go down here at the bottom, Easter Sunday rain likely and then dry weather until we get to that point. That's your forecast. All right, Rod, thank you. Well, it is a new month, a new quarter of the year, and it's April Fool's Day. But for baseball fans, it is simply opening day coming up we're going to break down all the action planned plus top chef portland premieres tonight the new season in the sunrise spotlight this morning with two local chefs ready to bring the heat how they managed to put together a show during the pandemic next